I've said it before and I will say it again, I am sure, but I just love leaning back and just looking at everyone moving through the airport. There's just something really satisfying about that in Airport CEO. I actually posted a time lapse to Twitter about a week or two ago that was of the old airport as it used to be and just a bunch of people moving around, planes moving around and cars moving around. It was, again, it was kind of satisfying to look at and I'm sure I will probably post another one of those up on Twitter of this airport at some point. So, you know, if you want to see that, twitter.com slash conflict nerd. And yes, this whole intro was just a, it was a ruse. It was a ruse to get you to follow me on Twitter. So now that I've admitted that, you can't be mad about it. That's, that's how that works, right? That's, that's probably how that works. I also want to mention that <laughs> I might be talking a little bit quieter. I might sound a little bit different. I've completely blown out my voice. And it's not, this time it's not because I was trying to sing like Linkin Park or Bullet For My Valent. It wasn't anything like that. It was because Halo Infinite multiplayer came out and I, when I, so when I was a kid, I played a lot of Halo, right? My first proper online experiences were on Xbox Live, on Xbox 360. And basically, I got really good at Halo, I got really good at Call of Duty, I got really good at Rainbow Six Vegas, and I'm not good at shooters anymore, but I like to kid myself into thinking that one day I could be, so I get a bit salty playing Halo at the moment. It's fun, but I get very salty. I don't scream at people, they can't hear me, but I'm certainly yelling at my, uh, at my monitor from time to time. I've completely blown up my voice from yelling at Halo and doing a little bit of vocal stuff for a project that you'll find out about one day. So just, just as an FYI, my throat really hurts. Okay, so if my voice has like weird inflections going on, that's, that's gonna be why. Now, today, I actually want to deal with a couple of things that I've seen brought up in the comments in the previous episode. Thing number one, was that I actually set up the wrong colors in baggage collection down here. We used to have blue on the left and green on the right, which was a bit of a problem because domestic flights have the green carpet, as we can see up here. So I went ahead and fixed that between episodes. And uh, basically, I kind of want to go ahead and just put in a few lights down here whilst we're in the area because it is a little bit dark down this way. So let's go ahead and grab some different uh, some different lights and just get them in here to uh, brighten the space up a little bit because it does look a little bit weird uh, not having you know lights along these uh, these sidewalks and I realize I've also not got instant build on right now we are simulating the construction which I mean I guess that's okay we're not building anything huge right now and by the way on the topic uh, that was a very <laughs> That was a very Christopher walking by the... And by the way, you know, I actually saw very few complaints about the turning off of simulated construction, which is nice. It was. It was It was nice. I actually saw a few people that were like, man, I would have turned that off a long time ago. You're fine. So I'm just... I'm kind of glad that no one was annoyed I turned off simulated construction because I always... I always worry. I do. I always worry that it's going to be like... You know, pe people aren't going to be thrilled about it. And I would get it, but at the same time, you know, it was it was staying off for the build process. It was a very, very tedious process. So I think keeping it off was, uh, was probably fair enough. Now, I did also see some interesting comments about getting people down to baggage handling. I saw some suggestions that mentioned that maybe we should have tunnels that come in here rather than sort of, you know, having people go through this whole windowless... Uh, you know, thing here and then get blinded by the sunlight as they come out just to cross over the busiest road into the airport back in here. And I think that's a fair point. We could probably do some kind of escalator underground to bring them over this way and then into this space. And I was actually looking at it and thinking that we could do elevators in like sort of that spot right there if we did an extra little bit of building, which... We could absolutely do. We absolutely could do some extra bits of building in there, and we might do it. I'm not saying I'm going to do it right now, but we could. 
if we really wanted to get some elevators in there get some escalators in there and just connect this thing a little bit better so people don't have to go outside but that's that's gonna be something for maybe later on because right now I do want to go ahead and get some extra subways in here which was another thing that was suggested in a comment on what I think was the last episode uh, a couple of comments mentioned hey maybe put some subways by baggage handling or baggage collection so people can you know come down get their bags and then just hop straight on the subway to get out of there and I think that's a fantastic idea so we'll have a little bit of uh, subway right here and that'll help people sort of go about their business and get out of the airport when they're done getting their bags and uh, we'll just go ahead and let all that get built up it won't take too long to do it should be a nice improvement and while all that's going on let's tackle another uh suggestion that was thrown in the comments on the last episode which was walkalators and i'm gonna do something a bit weird with the walkalators i'm gonna go ahead and say that i want them to be in line with those doors up there and I'm going to have them stop there, so right in line with the top of the chairs. And I'm basically going to do the same thing the entire way down here. So we're going to have these weird gaps between the walkalators. But this is actually something I've... Not, not to this scale, but I've actually seen this done before. Copenhagen Airport actually... I think it was Copenhagen, actually has got uh, walkalators that sort of do this they have like breaks in them so you can get off the walk later to go to you know wherever you're going to and we're also going to double it up like that so you can kind of get on the bigger ones to cover you know more distance in one go but that i think looks totally fine i actually wonder if it would be better to do this slightly differently i i wonder if i did this right so if i put one let's see if i put one there and i put one there Oh, they don't really fit together all that nicely. Although what we could do is if I put one there and I move you up one. I can't put it in the middle either. So this would have to be up two. You would have to be down sort of two. We could kind of do that, I think. Which might actually not be a bad idea. It would save us having so many of them if we just leave a gap of two every, you know, however... You know, so something like this, right? So every... Oh, that's actually kind of perfect. I mean, you can... The gaps aren't perfectly lined up with all of the stands, but at the very least, you can kind of get off the walk near where you need to be. And that's... That's not bad. That's that's actually not bad. I think that's pretty much, pretty much perfect. So that's... That's kind of what we're going to go for, I think. And just because I like a little bit of decoration, I kind of want to go in here with some... Uh, hedges alongside the walk lighters, which might be a little bit weird. In fact, it's it's definitely a little bit weird to have just this massive sort of moving path thing down through the airport surrounded by hedges. Uh, but I feel like it probably... I don't know. I don't know. Looking at it, I can't tell if it has like a rail on the side there or not. But if it doesn't, it definitely does now, which is fine. I think it'll look good. I think it'll be okay. Uh, the thing is, these are going to be taking up a pretty chunky uh, amount of the departures area so we're gonna have to figure out something else for any restaurants or uh, lounges which were other things that I saw suggested in the comments on previous episodes as well where are we gonna be putting lounges where are we putting restaurants where are we putting bathrooms and that's all stuff I'm gonna try and tackle today as well so we'll go ahead and leave those ready to be built they'll get done in good time and I feel like it's probably time to get ourselves a bit of a bathroom and probably a bit of a staff room as well. So let's go ahead and do this and let's do this, right? And you know what? Let's do this as well. And I want to make those. So this is going to be a staff room. And so is that little, little room just up there. It doesn't need to be a staff room, but it's going to be just because it might as well be. Uh, this space right here, I'm thinking, is essentially going to be a bathroom. So let's go ahead and mark it out as uh, as a bathroom right there. And what we'll do is... Well, what do we want to do with this? Let's do this. 
right? So what is that? Nine across. So if that's nine across, that's kind of the middle point there. So if we take those bits out, that gives us sort of a nice way in there, which is totally fine. We need to make that a secure area. And then we'll just go ahead and set this up as a uh, as just a sort of generic uh, bathroom right here. So just a whole bunch of those across there. We can sort of have sinks. I always forget that we can kind of weirdly have sinks just sort of floating in uh, in the middle of space right there, which is really weird. But I think that's kind of what we're going to do. And that'll be a bathroom. It's not the fanciest bathroom, but that's that's going to be our bathroom. In terms of flooring, we'll just go for some simple uh, tiles right there. For the staff room, we'll go for the... Hmm. Let's go for the light wood. And then the dark wood in the smaller room right there. Just because we can. So we'll get that all built in no time at all. Although looking at it, we're probably going to want to get some... I want to say light wood under there as well. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to be light wood there too. And just a bit of uh, the tiles... Can I select the tiles, please? There we go. Uh, just under that door as well. So that'll be fine. That's going to be bathroom number one and a couple of staff rooms that we can furnish at the same time as the other ones. And while we're waiting on all of that being built, I also want to come way, way down to the bottom here. And I want to go ahead and build another bathroom. And also, I kind of want to build what is essentially going to be a bit of a chunky lounge. So, this is a bathroom, right? It's it's quite the size. And then this is going to be a lounge, which I think is fine. And the entrance for the lounge can kind of line up with the walk later's there as well. So, let's go ahead and get everything built. We'll get the bathroom in here. We'll get the lounge. Which one's the lounge? That's the lounge right there. We'll get the lounge in there. We'll get it all open. We'll get it decorated. We'll get people in there. And hopefully good things will happen. And you know what? Because I'm lazy... I'm turning off simulated construction because I just I just want to see how things go. Oh, wow. This bathroom turned out to be a lot more popular than I thought it was going to be. walk are actually being used as well. And this bathroom up here is also kind of ridiculously popular, which is, I guess, good. People aren't going to be ruining the carpet that we've put down. But my uh, my lounge, on the other hand, still needs a little bit of work. So we've got a nice little what is it? Airline lounge desk thing right here. I want to make this place look good, though. I really want to make this lounge just look proper, you know, fancy, really nice to uh, to be in. So let's go ahead and get a nice. Can we get two buffet tables in here? We absolutely can. OK, we're going to do two buffet tables because we're kind of fancy like that. And I think in terms of seating, let's go for let's go for some modular stuff a bit like this and a bit like this and we'll kind of i guess you know double it up a little bit that way i'm also gonna why is it flashing like that? that's a bit weird uh we'll do this right we'll do a whole bunch of modular seating even though i don't hmm that might actually be too much looking at it i think i think we want to space these out a little bit i don't think there'd be massive groups of people traveling regularly enough together to warrant like what eight person tables so something like that's probably fine so that we have some uh, some four person tables we can go in we can grab some uh, some square tables here and we'll just sort of dot these around and that'll be a decent bit of seating for people that want to get something to eat which is usually my main reason for wanting to go to uh, an airline or an airport lounge uh, we'll also do some laptop tables which are the other reason that I tend to go into these kind of lounges. Uh, in terms of chairs, what have we got? What have we got? What have we got? We've got these nice sort of modern chairs, which I think look pretty cool. So we'll sort of dot those through there. And we have this weird space down here. We need to do something with that. But let's also put in some nice kind of, I guess, sofas. I guess something like that. It's a bit weird looking though, isn't it? It's kind of close to the door. What about down here? What if we did like this and then we move the, the laptop stuff up a little bit? That might actually be a better idea. So just grab all that and sort of put it there or like there or even here. 
I actually kind of like the idea of it there. I think that looks a lot better. And there we go. I think this looks okay. We've got some people coming into the lounge, getting some food, chilling chatting doing their thing we got a bathroom next door we got people waiting down here we've got the walk -alators to bring people down here but the big problem right now is that people actually get stuck in this part of the airport because by design admittedly there's no way to get back through security so we kind of need to do something about that so what i'm thinking we do is we basically well, we basically want an escalator or an elevator or just some way for people that miss a flight to get back through the airport to leave. So that's basically what this is going to be. We're going to put an elevator right there and we're going to just get some walls sort of along the side of it. And uh, we can go kind of here. We can kind of do this sort of thing. This is going to be just a weird space. Uh, but essentially, we're just going to make people you know, go in this massive walk around the airport as we have done many times. So they'll come down here, they'll go through some doors and they can leave sort of the same way that everybody else leaves. So if they miss their flight, I mean, yes, it's a huge walk that they have to go on, but at least they can get out. And that's, I think, probably quite important to them. Uh, we can also put some walk -alators in here just to speed up this process as well, because it is going to take a bit of a minute for them to get around. Uh, so we'll do this and we'll get one in there as well. We could do one in there. I don't think it's really a priority to uh, get a walk later in there. We can do one down the bottom. I don't really think we need that either. I think what we could probably do is grab a large one though. And can I fit it in here? I actually can, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I think a medium one is going to look just a uh, little bit better. And we'll sort of tuck it against the... Actually, we'll just throw it right in the middle. If they want to avoid it, they can walk on either side of it, and that's fine. That should let them uh, get around that little bit quicker. And we should see, eventually, some people, yep, using the elevator to get back down and leave the airport. That should include staff as well, which is fantastic. Now, what I'm thinking... And this is, this is, again, based on a comment from the previous episode. What I'm thinking is that these rooms were, were potentially going to be staff rooms. I think it would be more interesting if we were to go in and, like, take out this whole section of wall right there. And then we put, like, windows there. So as you're leaving the airport, you can look out onto, you know, the tarmac at all these planes coming in and leaving and all that stuff. I just think it would look more interesting. And I mean, I know that doesn't matter in the context of airport CEO, but for my own sake, I I would be a lot more interested. Like, I, I've said it before, and, you know, it's like I said right at the start, I'll say it again. I really like airports. There's just something about, like, sitting, especially in Belfast International Airport, there's just, like, they have a, a Starbucks that, like, all the tables and chairs and stuff are just perfectly set to look out the window at the runway at the planes coming and going it's just kind of cool there's something about it that's just really relaxing and also kind of makes you feel kind of small because it's like you've got hundreds of people it's, i mean every airport well actually not every airport has it manchester airport has a lounge which has a view like that but it doesn't have just a normal space like that but the point is i I can't remember the name of the the feeling. There was this, there's this like thing circulating the internet that's like, here, these words describe feelings that you will have had and you won't have known these words existed. And one of them is a word to describe the feeling of realizing that every person that you see has a life as complicated and full of love and hurt and meaning as your own. And I, I, for the life of me, cannot remember the name of that or what that word is. But I get that feeling the most whenever I'm in an airport or whenever I'm, like, thinking about the realities of, like, my job and this YouTube channel. Because then you get that feeling of, like, oh, yeah, every, like, subscriber, except for, you know, obvious bots, is, like, a person 
with like a life as you know full of love and hurt and meaning as as my own and that's terrifying to think about so i try not to think about that too much but uh yeah i do i do get that feeling a lot in airports just kind of looking out at like all of these these planes just coming and going you know doing their thing it's every plane full of people either going somewhere or you know coming home uh you know going on a vacation visiting family visiting friends uh you know moving to another country moving to another part of the country you know going somewhere for good news going somewhere for bad news and it's like i don't know i i, I i'm sure i'm not the only person that like has kind of sat in an airport and just looked around and gone like man there's there's like a lot of people and every one of them is like going somewhere by the end of today all of these people are going to be somewhere vastly different to where they are right now in this airport it's i don't know i i <laughs> i'm not trying to get like philosophical with it you know it's it's um, it's not that to, it, it's not that kind of thing but it's uh it's still weird it's still weird it's still something i i think about and that i uh i realize from uh, from time to time anyway i think this looks a little bit better than uh, what we had going on before definitely a bit of a weird looking space but i think it looks a bit better although i would kind of like to go in there and just do some walls like that so it looks almost like uh well actually do we want to do that or do we want to do like a pillar i i think i think i prefer the wall yeah i think i think i prefer that i think it just looks like it's you know holding up whatever's above uh so let's go ahead and just copy and paste that into that spot and up here and right about there and we'll do the same on the last couple as well just to make it look you know like it's sort of holding up the building i like that i actually like that a lot i'm also pretty sure we're losing a whole ton of money right now so we probably do want to start looking into getting the large planes in here but this is nice this is nice this this feels like a good start this feels like a good start for this area i do still really want to get uh some shops in here though so let's maybe get like one and then we can maybe look at the large planes so i think what we'll do here is actually go for a food area since i think that would be a little bit more interesting than just a generic shop and what i'm gonna do is go for this massive 18 by 24 space and i want to try and make this just sort of interesting so we're gonna nicely sort of put these these corners in here and i'm gonna go ahead and do some hedge right there although i could sort of do it on the outside as well but we'll do it right there although looking oh you know what would be a better idea actually thinking about it would be deleting the room and then going and doing something like this instead so putting the oh uh, hold on i'm gonna have to get rid of all of these walls now that i think about it uh so basically actually this needs to go as well so the food room is gonna be that little bit bigger uh it's gonna be that size but it has to not cross over different zones so all of this so 19 by 24 is what we're looking for on this one so from here to the bottom and right about there so that size right there we want to do these sort of corner pieces in the four corners we want to go and get some hedging and go there and there and we could leave sort of you know multiple ends of this thing open but if we do that people are going to be walking through it way too much and that's just going to annoy me so we're not going to do that we'll just leave like those bits open and that should be totally fine and then what i want to get with this is something pretty fancy so i actually want to get cooking stations in here and modular sofas and all that kind of stuff so let's see what exactly we're dealing with so we have stoves we have counters we have sinks we have cooking stations now the way i want to try and do this is i want to have like the food prep area be sort of right in the middle of this whole thing i think that would be kind of cool and then we'll do sort of some counters that go like this 
We can do some counters sort of at this end as well. And what else are we going to be needing for this? So if we have a look at this, we have the, the stations. We need the sofas and we need the cafe counters as well. Now, the cafe counters are these guys. So we can actually do quite a few of these, which is kind of neat. So we'll do something like that. And I think that's pretty cool. Although we probably want to leave these bits open so staff can actually get in there. Otherwise, that's going to be a bit of a problem. And we also probably want to say that this entire thing is a staff zone and also double check that it is secure which it now is so i think that's interesting i think that's a good little layout for it and then we just need modular sofas and some tables and all that good stuff so let's go in with some seating let's go and do a corner piece for there and we'll go for there as well and we'll just get some uh, generic bits of modular sofa. So something like this. We'll do one right about there. We'll go for there and here as well. And I think that'll be enough. So what we'll do is we'll just dot a few more sections of modular sofa across there. We'll do the same down here at the bottom as well. And maybe not those last ones actually because they feel a little bit too close to the entrance. So something like that's fine. We can get some nice kind of modern chairs for the other side since I don't think they need to be uh, modular. And there we go. We have absolutely everything that we need. I think it's a decent looking little restaurant. So hopefully it's actually not going to just go out of business because no one wants to use it. That would be just a little bit annoying if that were to happen. So hopefully it won't be the case. Although I do want to see it up and running. I want to see some staff come in here because I just, I just want to see if it works. To be completely honest, I just want to see if people actually want to like go here, given it's like the only restaurant in this entire part of the airport. I mean, we have like, we have this one, good old Cranes Burgers, which is actually doing phenomenally well for itself. 600, near 700 sales when it just needed 30. That's that's pretty good. The uh, the businesses in that part of the airport doing really, really nicely for themselves. And there we go. We actually have some staff coming in. Oh, look at that. That's... Oh, wow. Oh, my God. There's actually a really good number of people wanting to, uh, wanting to go here. Oh. I mean, that's... Oh, my God. That's, that's actually kind of fantastic. So how many sales do we need? 95, and we've almost done it. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's that's pretty cool. Okay, I need to build more of those at some point. We're not doing it right now, but that's... Ooh. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I really like this part of the airport now. I really like this little design. It's different. It's definitely... Uh, it's, it's definitely different. Okay. Uh, plenty of people coming into the airport as well. Plenty of them just going around, doing their thing, shopping, checking in and all that, going through security. That's always lovely to see. So I guess at this point, really, it is just going to be a case of building the... Well, I guess we're, we're building or we're going to start working on the larger stands, right? So in terms of terminal foundations, uh, what size are we looking at? So we're going to be dealing with, what is that? 8 by 95. Okay. 8 by 95. So coming off of right about there. Oh boy. Okay, so how much is this gonna cost? That's eight. And we wanna go down to 95. So eight by 95 is 760,000. That's fine. We can totally afford that. But the thing is, we gotta do it again. So we gotta do eight by 95 a second time right here, which is another 760,000. And then we need to figure out where the uh, where the stands are going to be going. So let's go ahead and have a look at those as well and see what we can do. We get large stands. We're going to go for concrete. And it's going to be... Oh, God, it's 400,000 a pop. Oh, God. One, two, three, four, five. We can technically do six. And to be honest, I kind of want to do six because I feel like five of them is not going to be enough. But I think... I 
think we'll stick with five just for now and actually looking at it if i really wanted to i could sort of double these up at some point if we put the runway way over on the right so I, that would actually play in nicely with one of the main comments that i've seen which is hey not everything has to be symmetrical so that that would kind of play into that let's also build the uh, the jetways on these guys as well just so that they actually link up to the top part of the airport here so jetway on you and jetway on you in terms of baggage it's gonna be this guy right here i'm not actually 100 percent sure how many of these i can connect to a single baggage bay uh, but if we click all of them and do that i think that's all of them connected so if we look at you five out of six large stands now that's making me want to build the sixth one i'm not gonna lie that makes oh, wait, uh, the thing is if i build a sixth one i can't just go straight across here which would be my plan something similar to like i think it's gatwick airport in the uk that has this big bridge that goes over where the planes go so i think we'll stick with five for now or we could extend down and build a sixth down here oh boy oh boy I'm getting ideas. I'm getting ideas. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous for me to be getting ideas, but I'm getting ideas. Uh, the good news is, at the very least, we have the stands, and I feel like that's the bulk of the expenses dealt with. At this point, it's, well, I'd say that's the bulk of the expenses. We actually do need a runway and taxiways as well, so we should probably get those done. Uh, so the runway is going to be 1 million flat. Oh, God. Okay, so bulk of the expenses, maybe, maybe not quite. Uh, so a million flat for the runway. That's a lot of money. That is, that is a tremendous amount of money. Uh, I've also, I, I did see some comments as well that mentioned using these sort of angled uh, runway entrances and exits for these runways over here because they are a bit quicker. I might look into that at some point because the thing is i i've oh man i keep saying the words i've seen some comments i've seen some comments i've seen some comments i've seen a lot of comments i i actually like people like to be like oh he doesn't read the comments i do i, I do it's just you know sometimes it takes a minute to like get back to them uh the point being that i have seen some people being like okay so you do all of this like what what is this what comes after the big airport revamp and I mean, that's a valid question that's a it's a fair question because you know i'm trying to figure that out sometimes uh i think it's just going to be a case of like tweaking just everything i think that's kind of what i want to do i want to get this thing uh going pretty well and then i want to just keep working on it to make it better so that's that's kind of where i'm at in terms of what i want to do with this uh with this airport Right, so we get this all built, we get money coming in, and then once we get a bit a, a bunch more money, you know, take some things apart, build them better, and just kind of go from there. Also, I'm leaving these extra gaps here, just because I think it's going to look better, especially if I do some other stands on the other side. Which honestly, uh, if I did other stands on the other side, it'd be something like that. So you'd have two planes pushing back under the taxiway and then heading down to take off. So it might be. It might be something we do. It might be something we do. But for now, we'll just do the one. So let's bring this guy down here. Let's bring this guy over here. This is so expensive. Uh, we've got 2.3 million left, which is okay. Uh, bring this guy. Oh, man. This really would be a bit like uh, a bit like Gatwick. We'd have planes going under the uh, the bridge. So something like that. And that leaves us about 2 million flat to build everything else which is actually not bad that's that's a little bit more than i was expecting to have to uh to play with here i also almost totally forgot to build a hangar down here but we have one so everything is okay in that regard we've got a hangar over here for the medium aircraft as well we actually have two of those we have a bunch of hangars for the small aircraft so that's good that's a decent little setup right there. We just got to get passport checks in here. We got to get security back in here and then build, you know, just casually an entire friggin' airport terminal. 
So, at the very least, let's go ahead and do this guy. And let's go ahead and do this guy right there. And what we'll do is what I've done before, which is just a nice sort of chunky queue going back and forth on this one, which can go down to... I want to say, I mean, this, this thing doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be this much of a queue, but it can be. And then if I go into copy and paste mode, I can actually copy and paste the entire queue. And then we just put it over there. So that's two queues done on this guy. It's essentially going to be the same thing. Just looping all the way down through all of this space. And then we'll copy and paste it across as well. I think I, I I think this is a little bit of overkill right now in terms of queues. But if we do end up doubling up the number of stands that we have, I think these these queues and these security checkpoints will be they'll be they'll be pretty valid, I would say. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get that one right there. Get that one right there, 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 and there. And that looks pretty solid we're gonna need a really good number of security officers to work all of that but that's that's pretty solid i'm actually pretty pleased with that so at this point it's just gonna be a case of getting the walls in here to get this all set up we're probably gonna do the passport control checkpoints per stand although It'll pro so it'll probably be a single passport checkpoint to get into the departures area. And then it'll be, I guess, the checkpoint coming out for arrivals will be per stand, which might not be an amazing idea. I don't know if I want to do that. We might actually have to use a lot of this, uh, this space under here for different checkpoints and stuff like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We've got one and a half million dollars to make this work and to start making money. Otherwise, we're going to have to take a loan. And I really don't want to have to take a loan. Also, how's this place doing? It's it's doing good. It's it's definitely I I like that. That makes me really happy. Okay. Let's let's make this happen. Let's let's make this happen and get this airport making some serious money again. <laughs> 